Hi, Jaspi. Nice to Hello. see you. Nice to see you. I am speaking out of my living room uh, here in Melbourne, where I'm with my family this March. Uh, where are you? I'm speaking from my sister's home in Shanghai. I just returned to China from New York City at the end of July. Today we came together to talk about the project Stories from the Room and that we just launched uh, here in Melbourne together with Tadavara Museum of Art. I would like to start maybe by acknowledging uh, Bonvurung and Urunjeri people, traditional custodians of the land where I am uh, here in Glen Iris in Melbourne, um, and pay my respect to the elders past, present and emerging. Your project Stories from the Room has been launched as a part of the project and inquiry, Art as Essential Service, that is presented at the Theravada Museum of Art. In entering the second lockdown here in Melbourne, confirm how difficult it is to really coexist with the virus and really the challenges that we face on a daily basis. And I think we have learned that internet, at least for me and many of us share this, will never be a substitute for the proximity and physicality that is really crucial to our well-being. And I think the pandemic has shown that the network of international solidarity needs to be revisited. One of the major questions that projects together with the artists invited try to open up the cracks is around art as an essential activity or essential service and how can institutions perform that essential service. I would like to maybe start with a question, just be how did the pandemic and lockdown impacted your own artistic practice? I started my self-quarantine in March in New York alone. At the beginning, I thought I could have finally have all the time to myself and work on some big project. But I quickly realized that I'm not that kind of artist who can stay in the studio and produce work. I really needed interaction with the world, with the nature and the people. And that's why I started this project called Stories from the Room. I am the person who really hated video chatting and I missed all my friends badly when I was in quarantine alone. And even if we're, we're in the same city in New York, but it felt like a light year away to reach some of my friends. And I feel like rooms has become a cell, a basic unit that created this parallel space between all of us. So I wonder how other people's life in other parts of the world like in pandemic. I really wanted to feel connected. And how many people uh, participated so far and um, where did they live? Currently, we received um, about 900 submissions from all over the world. Most of them are from the US, China, but we also do have some submissions from Europe and Africa and also Australia. I remember a girl in Wuhan sharing that she had a difficulty planning out dinners and she argued with her boyfriend about what what type of meal they, they they should cook for each dinner because they have very limited food supply. And then I remember a letter from Zimbabwe saying that there is a local policy called sleep where you were because there's a strict lockdown and then after certain time of the day that public transportation will be stopped so for example people who work at the market will not be able to return to their home so they need to sleep where they were and when i read another letter it will be from spain and then about five graduate students who rented a big house in southern spain and their biggest concern was how to deal with the roommate relationship. Can you talk a little bit about the physicality of the archive and 
what will happen with the letters when people submit uh, the stories from the room. We will build an archive housing all the submissions we have and then label them according to the location or different regions. The idea is to have a growing archive to accompany us during this lockdown period and hopefully when the lockdown is finished it will be presented to the public. Can you explain to people how they can actually participate in the Theravada Museum project? Uh, you can simply submit what you wrote during the pandemic. Um, it can be it can be your diary, your journal, your reflection, or anything. It can be one sentence to one thousand words. We don't have restriction to your language, your length. You just need to provide your name, your um, lo location information, and the date, and send it through email to Tara Wara's email. We have a specific email address that you can send it's stories from the room more specific information will be provided on the website of Terra Water Museum we also encourage people to post their contribution if they are not feeling comfortable with using emails so there is also option and explanation um, on the website uh, how to do that what do you hope th that this experience will offer to those who, who participate in the project? I really wanted to encourage people to keep writing as a practice of documentary or a practice of meditation as a way of spending their time during the lockdown, during the pandemic. And having this archive, I feel like people can know about other people's situation and then can maybe can feel connected in a way. Thank you Jaspi for your time and thank you for a beautiful project. I think we will continue reaching out for more communities and I think it's a very meaningful project in a very important time. So I mm. hope the project brings certain relief and connectivity to, to, to all of us. Thank you. Thank you Pliana. It was really nice working with you and thank you for bringing this project to more places.